Hello there, world of tankers, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Adrodles Blitz, and in today's video, I'll be playing in the Tier 8 Italian Auto Reloading Premium Heavy Tank, the Bisonte, a vehicle that I actually believe is incredibly underrated, and hopefully, I'll be able to raise a few eyebrows in today's video. Let's start off with the gun, very briefly breaking into the stats. The gun is very unique. It's got decent aiming time and dispersion for what it is as a Tier 8 Heavy, but what's unique is the damage per minute and how the auto reloader works. A lot of the auto re reloaders in the game, like the Kron or the Minotauro or even the Progetto, all feature three shells, and even the Caro features four. This tank features a double shot, but it's a reserve shell mechanic. So shell number one takes 16.3 seconds to load, but shell number two only takes 5.7. Now you also have to add in the 2.5 second intra clip, so it's more like 8.2 seconds, but still, that's a much faster clip. So what happens is essentially you use this tank as a single shot with your second shell, reloading every eight seconds to deal 310 damage, essentially making you similar on damage per minute to that of a Tiger II. But if you use the tank dumping both shells, you're going to lose your DPM going down to about 1400, which is a good 600 less than your average tier 8 heavy, but you have the ability to deal 620 damage in a matter of literally two and a half seconds. So it's a really unique tank where it can deal a lot of damage very fast, but it can also deal a lot of damage slowly and hold your opponents off. But it's really just depending on who you're fighting and really what mood you're in. Up against us this game, we have an E75, an Emil-1, and an IS-2SH. We have a Tiger-2 with no camo and a T-32. Now, our Tiger-2 is already going towards mid, and so is our T-32. So this game, it looks like pushing towards base C is not going to happen because... My Tiger II apparently is a medium tank, so we're going medium side, even though they only have one medium. Rather disappointing, to be completely honest, but I'm going to make the best of a bad situation. So what we're going to do to start off is I'm going to make my way right to this middle ramp if nobody ends up going towards A side, which is what I would most likely expect. So we're going to cut right through mid, and we're going to get hull down here. This is a very good position to not only spot any tanks that are a little late to spawning in or trying to cross here in the open, but as well, it's a really good spot in general just to hold hull down. So that's that's what we're going to do right now. We can see the Centurion 7-1 is spotted, and I've also spotted the E-75, who we somehow managed to miss, which was rather sad, to be completely honest. I can't believe that missed. All right, well, uh, let's chill here for now. Oh, there you go. We got the is Touche, and that also missed. All right, well, we got the Emil, and there you go. Finally able to connect a shot, but unfortunately, we have the Centurion 7-1 off to our side, because even though our entire team is over here, not a single one of them has decided to do anything to the Centurion. So, if that's the case, the good news about this tank, again, is I'm a double shot. So I'm going to sit here, I'm going to wait for my first shell, and now we're going to wait a little bit longer, and I'm going to have my second shell loaded. So, just like that, we have both shells loaded. We're going to get one tracking shell into the Centurion, and I'm not going to shoot him just yet. We're going to wait a little bit longer. Three, two, one, and a bonk. There you go. So that's a good example of where I don't really need to waste my DPM. I can just very easily shoot one shell and reload it and shoot it once again into that Centurion. So just like that, the Centurion is out of the game. Now our ISU has absolutely bonked the enemy IS Touche, which is good because I think that player might play a little over aggressive to get some vengeance in, which means we can get one very easy tracking shell in and two very easy tracking shells in. This is where dumping your shells when not having to bleed is very nice because this is how I think of auto reloaders, especially one like this. If I can dump my damage and I have plenty of time to reload, my team's not going to lose in the time I am, and I'm not going to lose out on damage, then there's no point not to dump because at the same situation here, I'm just getting free damage and more damage than I would have been able to previously. So that's kind of how I think of a, a tank like the Bisante when it comes to the double shot mechanic. So we got a nice shell into the ISU. We're reloading again. We're up to 1800 damage already, and we've got our shell reloaded again. It's a great example of where the gun is is able to honestly reload pretty dang fast. So ISU's off to the side, who we are going to get one shell into, and I'm going to shoot him twice because it's an ISU, and I hate fighting ISU, so we're going to get some nice damage into him. Unfortunately, our RESU is also killed, so I guess we traded an ISU for an ISU. Now, once again, we don't really lose any health for dumping our damage here, and it doesn't look like we're actually losing any damage itself on output capability, so... We're fine. We're just going to uh, see what we can do. We've got the T-28 Defender in mid, who maybe we can get a little bit of damage into. Aiming a Heat Shell and a Bonk. Okay, well, that was rather unfortunate, but we'll get a second pen in. 
we're going to make our way over to the E75. At this point, we only need to pen two shells into the E75. And even though I did dump my shells, by the time we actually get to this guy, we're probably going to basically be re reloaded, as you can see. And I want to get to a side anyway to make sure I can pen the shells. So there's one shell loaded, and in three... Two, one, we have our second shell loaded. There's one pen, and we actually damaged his Amorex. Let's shoot in that exact same spot. Unfortunately, it did absolutely nothing, but that's fine. We did 3,400 damage this game, and uh, a pretty solid victory. So, as you can see, the B Sante, the gun is great. Like, people look on paper and think that a gun is not going to be good due to the base statistics it carries. But if you based everything off of just statistics alone, then a vehicle like the WZ-132-1, the Tier 10 Chinese Light, would be considered an absolutely fantastic vehicle because of the spotting mechanic it has, the fact that it's got great DPM and mobility. On paper, the tank looks really solid, but in actual gameplay, and especially against the meta, it's not a fantastic tank. The Bisante, however, is the opposite. On paper, it looks like a vehicle that really wouldn't be all that strong, but because of the fact that you have the same damage output as a tank destroyer, if you shoot both of your shells, but also have the ability to hold off very deadly tanks due to the fact that you can save one shell in reserve at all moments, it means that you essentially just have a free 300 damage whenever you want it, so you can increase your damage per minute. Overall, it's just a really enjoyable tank, a really enjoyable gun, and the armor as well is super fantastic on this tank. Not only is the upper plate very strong, but the turret is completely spaced, and it is about 300-ish to 280 thick, which means that it's very hard to penetrate the turret, especially when you're using this tank's 8 degrees of gun depression. So this battle, we are up against an Action 10, an IS-5, a T-32, and an IS-2 Pravda. That is a lot of heavies. Now, they actually only have one tank destroyer, which is a G-Sor, a very deadly tank destroyer, but I normally don't like to go towards Sea Hill, but when I see that the enemy team has no tank destroyers, really, I think it's a lot more beneficial to make my way over towards the hill, so I'm going to try and help out my Action 10, I'm going to help out my KV-3, who appears he wants to stay a little passive, and we will see what goes on here. Now, starting off, I'm going to play a little bit passive, but I'm going to go low. I like going low. The hill is sometimes good, sometimes bad. But I like low because there's a bush here that you can spot your opponents through. I'm hoping that I wasn't spotted. Oh, there you go. We got the g -Sor. There's one shell into the g -Sor and we aren't able to get a second one out. I can tell you for a fact I would have. Being an auto-reloader, I would have easily, easily dumped two shells into that g -Sor. But he is still spotted back there, and he's not really doing all too much as of right now. Unfortunately, our Action 10 bled 600 health to the g -Sor, so... That's not great. We can see that the G-Sor is now crossing, and this is where being a double shot allows us, I was going to say, to finish off that player. But even we weren't able to finish off that player, it's still fine, because, well, he's dead, so we don't really need to worry all too much. Now we can make our way off to the side of this Action 10 and T-32. We're going to start off with the T-32. One easy shell into his tank, and we're going to back on up. We were able to get penned through the turret, but to be fair, that makes a lot of sense because we aren't really fully hauled down. Let's go for another shell into the T-32 and back on up. We do have the IS-5 in front of us, which is not incredibly fun, to be honest. Um, I'm going to get one shell into his tank. I'm not going to shoot the second one again. This is where you want to save your damage per minute. This is where driving this tank and using it as a single shot is much, much more beneficial. And by the way, the Bisante reverse is very fast, which is nice because one thing that heavies really need a lot of is reverse speed. Like, if you're driving a heavy, you want that reverse speed to get yourself out of a tricky situation you could have put yourself in. And this tank does feature that mobility, so that's something that's super nice about this tank. We still got that IS-5 in the back, and honestly, at this point, I'm going to drive... Oh, never mind. I thought we could have gotten away with that, but maybe not. Let's get one shell into you. Now we're going to back on up. This KV-3 has put himself in a very tricky situation here where I'm trying to support him, but at the same time, it's a three versus two and our team's not doing all too great. I'm really hoping that the IS-5 ends up poking because I can maybe get some damage in. There you go. IS-5 does poke. I missed the first shot, but that's fine. Never mind. It's not. We missed the second shell. All right. Well, in this situation, I'm going to back up. As much as I want to help out this KV-3, I also know my limitations and this KV-3 is kind of putting himself in a really bad spot right now. Our mediums have been able to get a nice shell out. We're going to reload in just a moment here, and at this point, we can shoot that IS-5, so there you go. We were able to finish off that IS-5. All right. 
This is where the nice reverse speed on the Bisante actually comes into play. Because we're able to reverse very, very fast, we can get ourselves out of that tricky situation. And what's super nice is because, again, we have this double shot capability, if I'm able to waste the enemy's time and we just reload for another two more seconds, we can act as a single shot against a player like that T32. I'm hoping he's going to overextend this. Well, there's the action 10. All right, well, for now, let's go for the action 10. I feel like that's the smartest decision. There's one shell into his tank. Let's just back on up. We get a nice bounce. And again, this is where being double shot is super nice because we can push this action 10. And this action 10 is in a very, very tricky situation because we were able to pen one and two. There you go. Great example of, again, that double shot just allowing us to always have that extra confidence to clear our opponent. So now, once again, this T32, it's a pretty deadly tank, but... In three seconds, we're going to have one shell. And in an additional five seconds, we're going to have two shells, which means I can guarantee that we're going to kill this T-32. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to drive off the cliff, get one pen into his tank, and three, a two, a one, a second pen into his vehicle. Just like that, two very easy shots, and once again, another 3,000 damage victory. I don't know if we're going to be able to ace the tank. Maybe. We did capture a base, and we also got some pretty decent damage and some kills. So it's very possible we could actually ace the tank in the end here. Come on, give me two aces for two battles. Yes! There you go. But as you can see, the Bisante, it's an absolutely amazing tank. I would be willing to say this is one of the best tier 8. It's right up there next to the T-77. It's just a super solid vehicle. So, I would highly suggest to keep an eye out for this vehicle when it rolls around in stores, whether it's in the Blitz Fair or other events. It's just a fantastic tank. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video, and if you'd like to see more like it, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.